Okay, before this video gets started, I've got a serious warning for you. If you are easily offended, and if you do not like penis jokes, then do not watch this video. This is a very tongue-in-cheek project that uh, I wanted to show you, but if you are gonna be offended, I don't wanna hate mail, I don't wanna hate comments, I don't like dislikes, so uh, if you think that you're not gonna like it, then don't watch, thanks. All right, you've made it this far, so you are curious. You wanna know what I'm working on. So let me tell you a little story. Uh, Henry from SS Glass Art that does the water jets, we've talked about him lots of times before. If you visited his Etsy page, you have also noticed something that I noticed, um, which is he sells some uh, penises on his <laughs> on Etsy. Uh, boy, this video on YouTube is gonna get all sorts of flags. Um, and so uh, he calls them bags of and I just thought that that was kind of funny, and I made a joke to him once about um, about that. It, it, frankly, I was just curious, uh, does he sell a lot of those? And he says he sells a surprising amount of those. And so um, then I ordered some items, not those, uh, and guess what? He sent me some samples of... Uh, of his artwork here. So you've got little water jet cuts, but then now he also does some freeze and fuse. And um, as you may know, the uh, eggplant is the emoji of choice when you're trying to uh, be suggestive. And uh, he does some amazing little freeze and fuses. These are, I mean, the detail on these is really pretty incredible. But what the heck am I gonna do with these? Um, so I decided to return the favor. He sent this to me and I thought, um, this actually is an opportunity for me to try something new. I bought a Cricut cutting machine, the vinyl cutting machine. I have yet to use it really from a glass perspective. So I've sat down, I forced myself to learn a little bit of it enough to cut a vinyl stencil. And I have a, just a repurposed frame here. I love going to the uh, thrift store, got this one for 99 cents uh, and it's a five by seven. So I cut myself and I was picking out glass that I thought would have a good color combination with um, uh, my artwork <laughs> here. Uh, and so um, I went with this glacier blue because I thought that that was a nice complementing color to uh, what I was about to do. I've cut myself a little bit of a, a vinyl stencil that I'm going to frame and send to Henry as a gift. By the time uh, I publish this video, he will have received it. Uh, I'm going to make him a little studio sign that says, don't get distracted. So, <laughs> so I, uh, and then I've left a little spot uh, for the eye and uh, I'll just decorate the rest with the rest of these. Uh, we'll put it in for a fuse and put it in my piece and, uh, and ship it off to him and see what kind of reaction we get. So I've decided to, uh, I'm gonna cut this glass and then I will show you my process for stenciling. And uh, I've never done this before, so we're all gonna cross our fingers and hope that it works. Before I cut my glass, let me talk a little bit about framing glass. I love to do this, and I've done it on several uh, pieces that I've uh, had in the past. What I'm doing is a single layer of glass here. It's just a three millimeter. I'm not doing a full fuse, um, and it's just, it'll just be a tack fuse. And so um, I'm gonna cut a single three millimeter uh, sheet of glass into five by seven, which is the size of my frame here. I've popped the frame glass out. Now most float glass is uh, you know, thinner, uh, probably a one and a half or two millimeter, maybe even just one compared to this. Um, so you have to think about that as you're framing your piece. But generally what I found with most store-bought frames, you can hear all the caveats in my tone, is that um, you can put a single layer back in with the backing of the frame. Now you may have to eliminate, um, you know, the extra extra padding that they include, or uh, you know, that extra piece of cardboard. But generally speaking, you can get your frame back back in 
on a single layer three millimeter piece. And so that's what my intention is here. That will make this artwork generally lighter weight. Uh, it certainly saves on glass and it makes it something that will fit nicely back into that frame. So now I am gonna cut my five by seven piece. All right, so I've got my uh, piece of glass cut here and uh, I am going to mix up, or I start to mix up my silkscreen black. So I'm using Colors for Earth, it's a silkscreen black. Uh, it's a dry powder that you mix up with some medium. And the beauty of this is if you don't use up all your stuff, you can just keep it and it'll dry out. So it got dry here, but uh, I can reuse this easily. So I'm gonna add more medium to this and let this start to soak and saturate a little bit. I've also got uh, here just a clean piece. Yeah, actually, it's the float glass that came from the frame. I'm gonna use that to spread my uh, medium out on so that I can use it to roll it on. Uh, so I am going to apply my decal here in just a moment, but in the meantime, I want to go ahead and get started and let this start to, um, uh, to reconstitute here. I may not even need to add any extra powder. So we'll just let that get started soaking, put that off to the side and here, is my uh, decal. So what I've done is I've cut it so that it is five by seven and I can you know, basically just uh, center it over my glass here. And so I'm going to peel the backing paper off. I may do a video in the future about how to do, how I'm working on the Cricut and the vinyl, but at this point, I just don't uh, think I'm good enough to film a video yet. It looks like I've got a piece of that E. That, I know it's the A. It does not want to come off. So let me just burnish that down, make sure it's really stuck to my transfer tape. These are terms that I'm using and learning. So this vinyl is sticky on the back side. Now my glass is really clean and I've cleaned it with um, uh, vinegar just to uh, try to make sure that it was as clean as I could get it. Now, forgot to bring down a card to uh, work on this. Now, this does not have to be super flat with no bubbles because I'm really not, um, I'm really just using this as a stencil here. That's, I'm sure that's good enough. I'm being, it's overkill here. So all I need to do now is pick up my transfer tape. All right, good. So it looks like my looks like my vinyl stuck well enough to the glass. I am going to run over this one more time just to make sure that I have nice clean lines. All right, now let's move on. So as you can see, that was hard, and now it's uh, starting to soften up. It needs to be well mixed. So I will get all of this ready and then show you my next step. Okay, so I've mixed this up really well. I didn't end up adding any more powder to it. I'm getting, I don't know, it's kind of a runnier uh, syrup. Oh, there's a little chunk there, let me work on that. Um, I honestly don't know what to, for, for something like what I'm trying to do here, I mean, I know for silk screening, specifically through a silk screen, there's a certain consistency that you're looking for, but I'm not doing that here. Uh, and I'm just gonna sponge this on to my design. So um, this is really just kind of a guessing game. I suppose I could reach out to my good friend, Paula McCoy, who actually owns this company and would know everything, but uh, I feel like I bug her a lot. <laughs> but I've talked in the past about having good relationships with your suppliers. Uh, and honestly, I don't mind just experimenting and playing here. Um, so I'm not gonna bug her about this. Um, so I'm gonna pour a little bit of this now out onto my glass. And again, uh, you can save all of this. So whatever I don't use, uh, I should be able to kind of 
recapture and save. All right, I don't, as I just said, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna get started now. Um, I am going to load up this foam roller. And I'm just gonna go to town on this. Now a little, little, um, couple of thoughts about my font choice here. I wanted it to be somewhat uh, masculine. I went with this kind of typewriter. It's just, you know, courier font or something. Um, but I also wasn't sure how well the silkscreen black would do being kind of sponged on like I'm trying. I don't know why I'm going over and over this. I just am. Um, so what, what I love about this typewriter font is that if I get a nice, solid, gorgeous black, perfect, then I'm done. Uh, if it doesn't fire perfectly solid and you can kind of see through it a little bit, that's okay too, because that's kind of the, the effect that you get with a typewriter anyway. So um, so there you go. Uh, it looks, I mean, obviously the vinyl, I used a matte vinyl here, it repels, um, but the saturation on the glass actually looks fairly good here. I can't see through it to see the blue, so I'm pretty pretty pleased with that. So I'm going to let this dry some, not all, uh, but probably kind of almost dry. I don't know how to measure that, but uh, then I'm going to peel this vinyl off and see how it went. So uh, fingers crossed. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get myself cleaned up here. Well, I forgot how quickly silkscreen black uh, dries. So uh, this is truly almost dry. So I am going to very carefully peel this vinyl back. Now the inside letter of the letters Okay, it's a little rough on the edges. The inside obviously isn't coming off. I'm gonna have to peel those off separately. But I'm kind of okay with the edges being, and I didn't have to use a full five by seven sheet of vinyl here, clearly. It's a lot of wasted vinyl, but I was trying to also use it as a way to make sure that I was centered on my page. Um, the fact that the letters may not be perfectly crisp, again, is okay because of the style of font that I chose. So just take those things into consideration. I think if I had not let this dry quite so much, this might be lifting off a little bit better. I suppose I could have misted it with some water or something to try to Loosen it up again just a little bit. Because what's happening is that this, <clears throat> some of the letter, some of the silkscreen medium might be just a little thick. And so it's kind of lifting up around the edge a little bit with my vinyl. This is the very first time I've done this, folks. And so there are many of you who are probably watching this that have much more experience with this than I do. Um, so again, I don't teach, I just film as I work and sometimes you might learn something, uh, sometimes it might be more what not to do. Um, never professed to be a teacher. I am a guy who's pretty much doing a video diary of the nonsense that he's doing <laughs> and then you can decide if you're learning anything from it or not. I do know that lots of people use their crickets to create actual silk screens um, to, to screen this type of thing on. Uh, you could actually use dry powder if you use the cricket and do a silk screen sometimes uh, or make a screen out of it. There are probably a variety of ways to use that tool in your glass and I'm looking forward to learning them all. But right now, this is the way I'm starting. Okay, so now I'm just using a little uh, pick tool that I have 
to get the insides of those letters. Yeah, so uh, as I'm doing this, you can kind of see where the edge of the E is kind of rough, the edge of the T, that's okay, again, because it kind of works really well for me and this font, because it looks like typewriter font. So did you see how that was dry and then it kind of lifted up uh, some of the, the G? So that was the, that's the problem with some of this flaking off. It's not about the product itself, it's about operator error. I love Paula's products. Okay, I think that works. If I were looking for a crystal clear, perfect line, I'd be disappointed. But again, because of the font choice, <clears throat> I think it looks actually pretty dang cool. So I'm going to very carefully, because now I've got my hands all over this, I'm gonna very carefully clean around this a little bit, and then I'm gonna place my penises. <laughs> okay, so now to finish this piece off, I'm going to place As I'm doing this, I just need to be mindful of not getting them too close to the edge because it's going to be framed, remember? All right, what do you think? <laughs> uh, seems as good as anything else to me. I'm going to um, tack these down with a little bit of uh, hairspray uh, just so they don't move around on me as I get this into the kiln. Then I'm going to fire this to about 1375 for 10 minutes. Um, that is my favorite uh, tack fuse for stuff like this. And we'll see how it comes out. I'm hoping that the silkscreen black gets a little glossy on here. That's a fairly low firing temperature. I think that's the very beginning of the range for this product. So uh, we'll see how that works. Um, if it doesn't get fully glossy, that's okay. Again, a typewriter type. I think if it's a matte finish, that'll look all right. Um, but I'm kind of hoping excuse me, for a little bit of a glossier look on it. So I'm gonna uh, get this ready to go and put it in the kiln and show you what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, here's the final piece. So I put this in uh, for a fuse at 1375 for 10 minutes. And um, it the, the um, font here did not get perfect, the uh, silkscreen black, it's gorgeous. It didn't get perfectly, um, uh, shiny. So I think the higher the temperature you go, the shinier it's going to be. I just did not want to degrade the, uh, the water jets and the freeze and fuse here. So it's kind of almost a neutral between a matte and a shiny, but it is perfect as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, as I said, the font got a little messed up as I was picking that off, but because it's typewriter font, I think that this is perfect. I could not be any happier to be honest. So, um, what I would do in the future, if I were doing this over again, with this type of process, um, I would probably try to pull that vinyl off, my stencil off, before this got fully dry. Um, I would actually maybe not consider using silkscreen black. I would probably consider using an actual enamel. It's just, I, that's not what I had handy. I used what I had. Uh, but in the end, I think this is awesome. Totally love it. Hope you enjoyed it. Please no hate mail. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, I think Henry's gonna love it too. Catch you all later. Hope you learned something. Bye bye.